A week and a half into the NHL playoffs, and we just got a reminder of how unpredictable this game can be. The swings of playoff hockey have been emotional, chaotic, and weird, so let's cover everything that's happened from where we left off. Sunday, Canuck comeback. A full day of hockey to kick us off, and we got the Battle of the Frauds first up with Winnipeg versus Colorado. Now that goaltending has settled down for the Avs, this team looks like a well-oiled machine. Tactically, Colorado's speed and skill is giving Winnipeg fits in this series, and Kale McCarr wanted to show us firsthand. Dude, where's my car? There he is, going end-to-end, -end, slicing through the neutral zone like butter, and he goes roof on Hellebuck to extend Colorado's lead. There's so many weapons on the Avs, and maybe the most underrated is Valeri Nachushkin. This guy is built for playoff hockey, and he gets a hattie to seal a dominant 5-1 win over the Jets. Winnipeg is now on the brink of being eliminated and packing their sh** for a flight to Cancun. It feels like deja vu for this Jets team, as last year, they won the first game and got reverse swept by the injured reserves. This year, it looks like that's also a real possibility. Speaking of sweeps, it's finally time to break out the brooms. With the Rangers and the Anomalies going at it in Game 4, Washington needed to be perfect. So naturally, about a minute into this game, the Caps send a glorious pizza up the middle, hot and ready for Capocaco on a platter, and he buries to get the Caps chasing the game. Washington showed some fight back as Hendricks Leperrier had a determined goal by dancing through the middle, taking it to the house, and getting his own rebound. That would temporarily tie the game, but the Rangers special teams has just been too good in this series. Early in the third, it's Artemi Panera Bread who gets on the board, and ultimately, that right there is the series clincher. The statistical anomalies that are the Washington Capitals had a magical run to the playoffs, but they were simply outmatched in this series. Ovechkin finishes the series with zero points, Rangers move on, and the Caps are the first team who can pack their sh** and catch a flight to Cancun. Congratulations. The Oilers were looking to take a 3-1 series lead against the Kings, but instead of the high scoring machine that we're used to out of Edmonton, we got the Stuart Skinner show. Despite being outshot by the Kings 33-13, Skinner gets his first career playoff shutout with Evan Bouchard getting the lone goal in a snoozer of a 1-0 win. This is the exact type of game that the Kings wanted to play coming into this series, but they're in big trouble considering they can't even beat the Oilers with this style of hockey. That game may have put you to sleep, but the Canucks vs Predators was pure chaos. We did a deep dive on this specific game on our channel this week, but this game had absolutely everything. Before this one went underway, Canucks goalie Casey DeSmith was announced out with an injury. Vancouver had to go to their third stringer in Artur Silovs. After an early goal from the Brock star himself, Nashville would score three straight, including this controversial non-kick or kick into the net, whatever you want to call it. Besser would get his second with a tendy pulled, and this game was all but over with Colton Sissons having a wide open net. He throws a backhander on goal and he hits the post. Patrick Stefan is thrilled with that performance and Vancouver comes back the other way to score with 6 seconds left and Besser completes the hat trick in the process. I don't even want to know what alternate timelines this empty net miss just created but one of them is a miraculous comeback as the Canucks score 1 minute into OT to completely shock the Preds. They take game 4 and go back home with a chance to close out this series. Before we continue, I want to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. There is truly nothing like the NHL playoffs, and if you're like me, you're doing anything you can to get in on the fun live. I've been using SeatGeek for years to find the best deals to watch my Leafs live and in person. It's fast, it's simple, and watching the cup parade get cancelled live and in person is a whole lot easier knowing I got a great deal. Even if you've already used SeatGeek, you can click the link in our description and use the code HOCKEY15 to receive 15% off your next order and get in on the playoff action on me. You can grab your phone, open the SeatGeek app, and add the code HOCKEY15 to your account. This offer is only available for a limited time, so take advantage while you can and join in live on the chaos that is the NHL postseason. Monday, the end of an era. 
The Sunshine State Showdown is one Florida went away from being over, so Tampa was going to lay it all on the line. Of course, it wouldn't be the playoffs without some controversial calls, and after Tampa thought they would get on the board first, it would be ruled goaltender interference with Anthony Duclair in the blue paint. He interferes with Bobrovsky just enough, and goalies are like NFL quarterbacks nowadays. You can't touch them, and that results in a goal being called back. Of course, the beautiful game means that Florida would take advantage, and Carter Verhage gets the Panthers a 1-0 lead. Now, with Florida up 2-1 near the end of the second, Tampa gets a huge goal to tie it, but hold on. Gary Bettman makes a phone call to Sunrise and says, Nuh-uh, we got goalie interference yet again. I hate the call, but I'm not going to act like I know what the hell is or isn't goaltender interference when the league itself doesn't even know for sure. The goal gets called back and it took all the wind out of Tampa's sails as it's Captain Barkov who gets his second of the game and Florida just shuts down any last hope of a Tampa comeback. This could potentially be the end of an era as Captain Steven Stamkos is without a contract heading into the summer. The coach seems to think that he's a bolt for life but judging by the way Stamkos stayed out on the ice after the game to take in the atmosphere, who knows what's next. The Panthers are a wagon and that's a big win over a Lightning franchise that has got the best of them for years and they await the winner of the Boston Toronto series in the second round. Let's check in on the injured reserves who are trying to bury a Stars team by taking a commanding 3-1 series lead. In Game 3, Dallas had outchanced Vegas and had a ton of odd man rushes that almost didn't result in a win because of Logan Thompson. Game 4 was a bit more even as this was tied at 1 after a ridiculous snipe. Dallas would follow that up by scoring 2 goals in the second period to take a 3-2 lead with Wyatt Johnson, the 20 year old, getting his third goal of the series on the power play and he's already looking like a gamer for the Stars. Even though Vegas outshot Dallas 15-7 in the third, the Stars put the clamps on and added an empty netter to win Game 4. After falling down 0-2 to the injured reserves, the Stars are back in business, and now they head home to try and get a lead over hockey's biggest villains. Tuesday, Elimination Day. After Game 4 between the Leafs and Bruins, all you had to do is take one look at Toronto's bench to know that the Cup Parade was cancelled heading into Game 5. But you're about to witness the Maple Leaf experience. After talking to your uncle about trading everyone off the team for Game 4's performance, you find out that Matthews is going to miss a do or die Game 5. All hope seems completely lost until of course the puck drops and Jake McCabe hammers one home to get the Leafs on the board first. This is when you turn to your old lady as a Leaf fan and say, we're so back. But before you can even utter the words, Boston responds off a strong forecheck from their fourth line to tie the game. Despite Toronto outshooting Boston 11-2 in the first, we're all tied at one. The next 40 minutes was tight defensive hockey with some great saves from both goalies. Swayman was brilliant like he's been all series long, but it was Joseph Wall who kept Leaf fans from seasonal depression. Of course, it ain't a Leafs vs. Bruins series without some beef. You got Nyes and Pasternak chatting about their pregame meal, while Marshawn tries to have a friendly conversation with Pontius Holmberg. As he's doing that, he gets speared by the ref. The Leafs can't stop the rat, so they hired the refs to do their dirty work. With this going to OT, Joseph Wall would make an unbelievable kick save in the first minute of overtime to save the Leafs season. Shortly after, the Leafs transition the other way and it's the guy who left the island himself and John Tavares who drives the net, gets a lucky bounce and it pops out to Matthew Nyes who plays cleanup and the Leafs force a game six. Just like that, the Leaf Cup parade is back on, build the wall, start telling your friends. The Bruins will head to Toronto for game six while trying to fight off the demons of last season. I wouldn't be too worried if I was a Bruins fan because it's just like the Leafs to force seven and let their fans down one last time. The Hurricanes also had the opportunity to close the series out and they didn't waste any time getting the ball rolling. Seth Jarvis does some good work down low and he feeds Tara Vinen, who just throws it on net from outside of the dots and it finds a way in. That's a tough one to let in to start the game and one that certainly pisses off Patrick Waugh. There's a trend in this series where Carolina scores a goal and not even three minutes later, they double down just to overwhelm the Islanders. That happens again as off the rush on the power play, Svechnikov tries to find Aho and it goes off of Bertuzzo's stick and into the net. Tough bounce, but the Islanders would respond by getting a power play goal of their own. With Carolina pressing to try and get the momentum back, a chaotic sequence in front of the net sees Romanov put his hand on the puck, you can't do that, and that is an automatic penalty shot. 
Without a doubt, the Hurricanes send out the Birdman himself, Evgeny Kuznetsov, and you just know he's going to take his sweet ass time getting to the net as he waits for Varlamov to throw a poke check and the cheeky bastard goes forehand to put the Canes up 3-1. Considering how easy it would be for the Islanders to pack their shit and head to Cabo at this point, they show some balls and score two straight goals with one coming in the final seconds of the second period. The Islanders refuse to die, but sometimes the hockey gods just don't want you to win. On a Carolina rush, Brady Shea takes a shot that's blocked. It bobbles into the middle of the ice. Pajot tries to pick this one out of the air. It hops right over his stick, and Jack Drury is Johnny on the spot to capitalize on the bounce. Brutal luck for the Islanders, and before they can even catch their breath, the Hurricanes dump it in, Varlamov goes out to play it, the puck takes a bounce that has Islander fans questioning the meaning of life, and the Hurricanes double up in a span of 8 seconds. It is flashbacks to Game 2's comeback, and the Islanders simply can't believe it. Probably the unluckiest game for a team that I've seen in a while, and after that, the Islanders just couldn't find a way to bounce back. Hurricanes move on to face the Rangers in round two, and the Islanders can finally book their private jet to Cabo to enjoy the offseason. Meanwhile, the Jets are looking to avoid the same fate and escape the fraud allegations, but the Avalanche have seemingly kicked into another gear. The Jets get the all-important first goal with Josh Manson lasering it at his teammate's quad trying to clear it, and it bounces right off of him and goes straight into the net. The theme of this game though is that whenever the Jets looked like they were going to take control, the Avs had an answer. The sheer speed of this team on the forecheck and the offensive zone really reminds me of when they won the cup a few years ago. The Jets wanted to join in on the fun of scoring on their own net in this game as Pionk gets a brutal bounce trying to stop this bullet pass. The Jets would show some pushback as they would get a huge goal from Toffoli to tie the game, but the Avs are just a team that cannot be stopped. Two goals from Mikko Rantanen means that the Moose is officially loose and Winnipeg just couldn't hang from that point on. The Jets become the first team in NHL history to allow five plus goals in each of their first five games of the postseason. And that is really not a good stat to have when your best player is supposed to be your goalie. Colorado took their pace to a whole other level after game one, and they officially eliminate the Jets in five. Winnipeg is deemed the fraud squad, and they can finally pack their shit and head to Punta Cana. The Canucks, on the other hand, were looking to become the first Canadian team to move on to the second round, and early in this game, Vancouver was buzzing on home ice trying to pour on the pressure. They created a flurry of chances in the opening minutes, but, but it was no bueno as Sorrow stopped everything that was thrown at him. Nashville got their fair share of chances as they outshot Vancouver 11-4, but through 40 minutes, this game was 0-0. Just pure 90s level offensive output in this one, but that was until Nikita Zadorov steps into the zone and says, fine, I'll do it myself. He catches Saros in the RVH and goes upstairs where Mama hides the peanut butter to get the build and rocking and take a one goal lead in the third. But someone must have told the Preds that they can't go to another U2 concert because they responded right back on the power play and then took the lead with an Alex Carrier point shot to spoil the party for Vancouver. There's no miracle comeback in this one and the Preds stay alive to avoid booking their tickets to Cabo. Gutsy win to force game six after an emotional loss that could have easily rattled them in this one. So what do you think of round one so far? Who surprised you? Who scares you? Who pissed you off? Let us know in the comments down below. We have some specific team breakdowns coming out soon on the channel. So make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on any NHL playoff coverage.